to first take on this beautiful Monday. Shannon, you're looking very handsome in the blue out there in the ATL. Hope you're having a good time. Thanks. SA, it's great Thank to have you, you in New York City, of course. I'm sorry. I don't even know if I'm talking to Shannon. I'm sorry. I think, wait, can I just? Go ahead. Go ahead. At the hands of a cowboy? At the hands of a cowboy. At the hands did of a you cowboy. See, did you I see did Micah Parsons? Micah Parsons see. ran over, like literally ran over men, women, and children. Shannon, I mean, he was just beating Shannon, people up. Shannon coached him up. You he beat people up. When, when, when Shaq was doing it, you said Shaq was dominant. When Giannis does it, Giannis is dominant. When LeBron does it, he's dominant. Now you complaining. You stacked the deck. You had CJ. I got stacked the deck. Wow. I got Mark. Stacked the deck. Yeah, stacked it. Stacked it. Okay. Did you see Puka Nakua? Yeah. Did you see? Yeah. Him? Hold, 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 hold. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? Yeah. Do you know he wasn't on a roster? Shannon added him at the last minute. Shannon added that brother at the last of minute. Of course and, he did. I, and, and they gave me McCole Hartman. Who, 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 who's your size? <laughs> don't, Did, you don't, don't hate, Did you see the difference, though? Did you see the difference? Don't hate. Don't hate with the transfer portal and that he can recruit oh players. God, don't me. hate. I didn't know we were allowed to do it. They think I'm trying to tell you right now. Shannon Molly, just pulled strings, man. Molly, see, you this is what a three-time Hall of Famer. I see it. A three-time three three Hall of Famer. Now we learned the real status. Between, and I'm just a little old reporter right there that, that, that has advanced nah, in the nah, world of television. Now you little old reporter. This brother right here <laughs> is the three-time. Tom Hall is the three-time Super Bowl champion in the Hall of Fame, and he pulled strings. He pulled strings. Puka Nakua could play. I told Puka Nakua, I don't even want to talk to you. I don't even want to talk to you right now. This brother was, yeah. came out there flying, dunking on yeah, people. Was. I'm like, what, what the hell is going on here? That's what they did to me. Him and 50 Cent. My, 50 I have a, to be well, my okay, boy. last thing, and, and, then, and then we're moving on. Listen. Was this loss worse for you or the Michael Wilbon loss? I'm going to tell you this one. Really? Because Shannon added added the the, pat, the peeps at the last minute. What an addition! And they gave me the call. Nicole, I don't know if Nicole or McCall Hartman is the size of you or my daughter Samantha. I don't know. What I mean, that's how small he was. <laughs> but this guy, don't he do had, that. He had put the don't do that. All right, Michael all right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Michael Parsons. All right. Oh my God. But right. Nicole Hartman could play. We're gonna get into Molly? it. Yeah, yeah. Last Molly, thing. Yeah. One yep. more thing, Molly. Mm -hmm. One more. Our celebrity game was more competitive than the actual game. Yes, it was. Mm. Yes, it was. Yes, I like was. that. You want to know why? Because you two set the tone. All right, let's get into it, guys. A lot to unpack from this weekend. So, although it was a record-setting night of scoring in the East, 2-11, 186 win over the West. The NBA All-Star Game did not deliver the competitive product stressed for months by Commissioner Adam Silver. All-Star MVP Damian Lillard with his thoughts on whether the competitiveness can be fixed. I think something could be done about it. Um, I'm not sure what, but I think it, there's a way for, to, to make it a more competitive game. I don't think anybody's going to play in it like it's the playoffs, but it's a way to, to get guys to come to the table and, and just play a more solid game, I guess. Um, but I did think it was a good game. You know, anytime the crowd is, is engaged and you're hearing oohs and ahs, and, but it was just too many probably leak out, you know, go get a dunk, go get a layup type of moments. And I think if we can just limit those, um, you know, people probably wouldn't feel the way they feel sometimes about it. I don't know. I mean, I think it's something we need to figure out. Um, you know, I don't know where's the median because this is what, this is what a lot of the games are starting to look like now. 2-11, 186. Stephen A, is this all-star game fixable? No, not as presently constructed. Shannon Sharp, I'm of this mindset right now. They need to do away with All-Star Weekend. Just get rid of it. The whole yes. weekend? Let, not, no, no, no. Let me finish. The three-point okay. shooting contest, I'm totally good with. The three-point shooting contest, not just Steph Curry and UNESCO, who were fabulous, but the overall three-point shooting contest never cheats us, never disappoints us. They're going out there, they shoot, Agreed. trying to make shots. There's nothing wrong with the three-point. I'm talking about the skills competition. I'm talking about the slam dunk competition. And I'm talking about the All-Star game. Let me start with the All-Star game. Ladies and gentlemen, what transpired last night was an absolute travesty. Nearly 400 points were scored. No defense, no effort whatsoever. This is the ultimate indictment against the NBA stars who show up on NBA All-Star Weekend. You play harder in the summer league when you're training. That's all anybody's asking. 
we all know that when you're playing in the summertime and stuff like that, ain't nobody trying to get hurt. But you still give one another effort because you're working on your game. You can give the fans at least that. Nobody's asking you to compete like you're going up against the playoffs or even a regular season game. But when you are working out in summertime, Shannon, you know this, okay? Yes. You see guys giving effort in the summertime. That's all I'm saying. To that degree, that is not hard. The fact that you will go out there and flagrantly show such a lack of effort on the defensive side of the ball in any capacity is, a, is just a travesty. Now, if you want to sit up there and look at the fact that the kids are there to watch you, that's fine because they may not care. But anybody that knows basketball does, and we know it's a flagrant lack of effort and it's embarrassing, and we know if money was on the line, you'd be given more effort even though you're already getting paid hand over foot. It's really a travesty. Let me go to the slam dunk contest. Now, this is where I blame your boy, LeBron James, Shannon Sharp. Not for the All-Star game, but for the slam dunk contest. He's never participated. He is the only superstar, above the rim superstar in the history of the game, who did not participate in the all in the slam dunk contest. I'm not talking about now. I'm talking about the decision that he's made over the years. And what that has done is provoked a lot of cats on to come up to not participate in the slam dunk contest either. And now we've got a G Leaguer who is a back-to-back -back slam dunk champion. Props to Jalen Brown for participating, not caring about what people were going to say or how it looked. He went out there and he competed because you need names in the slam dunk contest. And I applaud him in every way imaginable for participating. But the others that chose not to participate, you trying to tell me we wouldn't want to see an Anthony Edwards in a slam dunk contest? You trying to tell me when Ja was healthy and in an all-star game, we would not have wanted to see Ja Morant in the all-star game? Of course we would want to see stuff like that. Shannon, I've called for a national competition across the streets of America, all right? Go and find... You can find some superstars for a slam dunk contest and had NBA all-stars sponsor them. All right, I got this guy, I got this guy, I got that guy, and let them be active in that regard, but let some of these brothers out here that can slam dunk, throw a, a, a million-dollar prize for the winner, a $500,000 prize for the runner-up, a $100,000 uh, prize for third-place finisher. Get a national competition going on throughout the streets of America and watch how many people will put on a show that's far, far better than what we're getting from these guys, okay? And the skills competition don't even get me started. In the end... The reason why I'm saying do away with it, if you want to show such a flagrant disregard for the fans, for the audience, knowing that the product that you're putting out there is trash from the all-stars, I'm talking about superstars on the court together, all right, going up against one another, and you don't care to compete, why should we watch? I mean, if you looked at Adam Silver give away some of give away the trophy yesterday, he looked disgusted. I know the NBA was disgusted. Most of the fans have been disgusted. Listen to talk radio this morning. Everybody's going off about how bad it is. We've been seeing it for years. They don't seem to care. So maybe we should stop caring, Shannon. That's what I wanted to say. I agree with everything that you just said. Um, it's coming. I mean, it's not as bad as the Pro Bowl because the Pro Bowl, you'll have tackling football and it's kind of hard to play two-hand touch. But when you look at it, Stephen A., it's basically morphed into layups, dunks, and threes. Yeah. And there is a blatant disregard for the game. You're right. You can get a better run in UCLA than you can an all-star game. These are supposed, these are not supposed, these are the best players in the world. And that is ridiculous. And yeah, I get it. The people in, the, uh, in attendance, yeah, they're oohing and on, But that's not what the viewing audience is saying. That's not what, because I remember in the Pro Bowl, I was there one year and they started, it, it kind of, and, 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 and Stephen A., I don't know exactly when right. it started to get to this. Maybe it was 2017, maybe it was 2018, where the blatant lack of disregard, and, and maybe they wasn't always sitting in the chair. We get that, and that's not what we're asking you to do. But just, just try. Just pretend like you care. Don't come with the blatant disregard that you've shown for the All-Star game over the last four to five years. They scored, the West, sco excuse me, the East scored 50 points in every single quarter. Now you tell me there was any effort involved in that. Mm -hmm. There was no effort involved in that. And Adam Silver has every right. Stephen A., I believe the dunk contest has run its course. 
There, I mean, at some point in time, all things must come to an end. Right. And maybe the dunk contest has come to an end for the simple fact the stars are no longer participating. The right. Dominiques, the Dr. J's, the Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. the uh, Kobe Bryant's, all the Larry Nassis guys were actually in the All-Star game mm -hmm. that was participating in the dunk contest. And the guys that, that weren't in the All-Star game, they were known as dunkers. Daryl Griffith from Utah, Dr. Dunkenstein. Right. You had Kenny Skywalker. That's right. So you had guys that were known. These, hell, I, the only guy really I, that I knew was was uh, Jalen Brown and Mac McClung. Mac, That's excuse right. me, Mac McClung, and he deserved the win. He deserved he was, the he win. Was a, he was. He was better. But hello, you got guys jumping over Taco. Aaron Gordon jumped over Taco Fall. Mac McClung jumped over Shaq. Jalen Bryan jumped over Casanet in a seat. What am I supposed to do with that, Stephen A? They should have gave him a two across the board. The man's already three foot tall. You put him in a chair 91, 91 five. And Jalen Brown dumped over here, and he got 40 plus points. Really, Stephen A? And the thing is, the guys are, it, to, in today's game, the word Zach Levine, the way uh, uh, Aaron Gordon is taking it, it's all about creative. Jalen Brown is a power dunker. He's not a creative dunker, he's a power dunker. But I don't know, Stephen A. I don't know. No. They're going to have to get in the room, the, uh, uh, the NBA PA, Adam Silver, because the way it's being played right now, the guys are making too much money to care about 100000 or 200000 or whatever the winning side right. is, is, well, is, is well, getting for winning this game. Something that's very, very uncomfortable to say, but somebody needs to say it, so I'm going to say it. You know, <clears throat> we have been all for player empowerment. We know that no matter what sport you pick, um, and it's apropos that in Indianapolis you see some player empowerment because the NCAA resides there. We know how many years they've spent exploiting the student athlete, and now their comeuppance has arrived courtesy of the trade, you know, the transfer portal and the NIL, NIL and all of this stuff, right? So we get that yep. part. But the flip side to it is that. When we talked about player empowerment, we also talked and we never, ever debated the issue of appreciation because we never thought we'd have to. In other words, with great power comes great responsibility. And we assumed Correct. that people would embrace it. You talk about that in terms of when you were playing and how you were a leader and you would literally inspire the guys and you talk about that and you look at them and you say, just make sure it ain't you. Just don't let it be you. You talk about that. And then we see players coming on this show. And one of the things you never hesitate, whether it's on this show, it's on Nightcap, it's on Club Shay Shay, you never hesitate to espouse your words of wisdom and advice based on your experience as a champion and a Hall of Famer. You get that. So that something along the line, there was a Shannon Sharp that said, yo, I've done this, I've achieved this, and with that came great responsibility, not only as a player, but ultimately as a spokesperson in the aftermath of my playing career. And I have not found one single player in the NFL, past or present, who has ever debated anything that you've said in regards to what your leadership entails. So I appreciate that. So you can understand where I'm coming from when I say, mm -hmm. where's that from the players for All-Star Weekend? Where's that from the players where you're saying, you know what, this is on us, y'all. We know we play harder than this. We play more competitive than this. What are we going to do to change that? This ain't about the league. This ain't about administrative issues. This ain't about collective bargaining. This is about you as an individual saying, yo, when Kobe and others were on the court, like, yo, let's compete. That's all, not to the degree of a regular season or a playoff game, but at least to the degree of summer league play. They won't even do that. And it comes across as you snubbing your nose. And when it comes across that way, why would it come across that way? Because you have the power to get away with it. And it's yes. abusive. And that is what has happened. And it has elevated a level of disgust that is coming in their direction. Not all, okay? But some of them, but collectively, because y'all on the court together, you're going to take the brunt of this. You're going to get your money. You're going to get your shine and all of this other stuff. But folks ain't going to forget it because... That effort last night, nearly 400 points being scored. That yeah. is an embarrassment. It is a travesty. And anybody that participated in that game last night should be ashamed of their damn selves. It's right. just that simple. Stephen, let me, Stephen let, me know, let, me, let me know if you agree with me. Sure. It seems to me, and this is what happened in the Pro Bowl, and I, I think it's starting to happen in the, in the uh, NBA and the All-Star game. I think the players love the idea of being selected, but they have no interest in playing. 
Yes. And their effort shows you once you get to the game. Once guys got started going and they started playing two-hand touch when you're playing tackle football, I was like, and I remember, I remember tweeting this. I said, it's only going to be a matter of time. I said, because the owners are not going to continuously foot this bill when you're putting this kind of effort out. And it seems to me the same thing. It is an indeed, an indeed an honor for players to like, I'm an all-star, an eight-time, a 10-time, a 15. You see LeBron has started 20 consecutive, all have 20 consecutive all-star starts. But it appears to me, and maybe I'm the only one, but it seems like guys are interested in being selected, but have no desire or no interest in playing in that game.